The world has become a very small place when it comes to being able to find personal and business information about anyone with a bank account, using email, mobile phones, the internet in general, social media. And so unless you've been living off the grid, there's a ton of information being collected about you, about me, about your family, about your business contacts. And there's existing videos on this topic, but I'm going to review this specifically from the mobile angle. And as in like why you need to know how data is being linked to your mobile number, how that information is then used to spam you and then eventually hack you. Now, before I start this video, please subscribe if you are interested in learning about mobile security. I've already got videos put out around MZ catchers, DNS hijacking, IP loggers, and more. And I'm going to put out uh, one or two videos per week on mobile security topics. And then if you find this valuable, then please like the video to help promote it so that other people who need to learn about how to protect themselves, what the threats are, this will get in their hands as well and they can get educated on it. Now, why should you care about data collection? When information about you becomes part of the internet, this data is being used by companies to sell marketing. So Google, Apple, Microsoft, all the social media accounts, your bank accounts, any kind of web, any kind of website where you've actually registered your information to be able to use it, to get access to it. If you're using that for free, then you are the product they're selling your data. And when they sell your data, that data is being collected by data brokers. The data brokers are selling it to uh, people who want to advertise. So a company like uh, New Zealand Air, for example, if you go to these data brokers and say, hey, I want to advertise to 250,000 people in the U.S. that are interested in vacation, uh, that take a vacation in New Zealand. And that's the reason why you're getting um, spam email, maybe get phone calls and maybe even get physical email because the more information about you there is that these data brokers have and the more advertising profiles you fit, the more times you're going to get contacted. Now, advertising is just advertising. The problem is, is that um, hackers will also use the same data. So hackers can go to these data brokers and you've probably seen advertisements for, um, you know, 995 or 1995, where you can get access to somebody's history, um, even their criminal records. And so it's getting kind of scary as to how much information is being profiled. Now, um, in addition to that, these, e even if you use social media like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, then, and, and even if you use a dummy name, like for, for Twitter, you may think you're anonymous, but if you're using an email ID, or a phone number that's linked to you in any way, these data brokers have web crawlers that are going out and tying all this information together. And so you may have a dummy name for your Twitter account, but they're going to pick up your real name because of the business that you run, because of another social media account or a bank um, where that data has been released, and also these data uh, breaches. So if it's a hospital system where they've announced that they uh, leaked you know, 200,000 people's records or um, there was uh, just in the last year a tourism website that leaked over 60 million people, and that information gets linked under these web crawlers, and then the data brokers are selling that. So if your information is with these data brokers, you're going to get more advertising, but you're also going to get more hackers that are coming after you. Now, in relation to your mobile number and why it's important is think about how long you've used your mobile number. So if you're like me, you've got at least one mobile number that you use for a decade or longer, and you just can't give it up because people in business know uh, you from that number, and you may have carried it for multiple jobs. So imagine how much information gets linked to it. So that information includes like your family members, information about them, past jobs, past addresses, social media accounts that you use, all that information is being stored. So after 10 years, it's gonna shock you as to how much information is being stored about you and that these, act, these uh, hackers can access in order to do a SIM swap. Now, the most dangerous thing about your information being there is that hackers can easily access information. So if somebody wanted to SIM swap you, for example, steal your mobile account away and use that to do password resets and daisy chain through your email, authenticator out your bank, your crypto, your brokerage accounts, whatever they want, uh, social media, take that over and ransom it back. There's a lot of different things uh, that hackers can do to monetize stealing your mobile account away and it's worth their time. So if they can steal $3,000 of Bitcoin, they're going to do it. If they can uh, take over your YouTube account uh, where you've built up um, a big following over years and ransom it back to you for $1,000 or more in Bitcoin, it's worth their time to do this. And one of the ways they do it is by using these data brokers, data breaches, information 
that can be collected about you on the internet, on the dark web, in SIM swap forums. And that's how they impersonate you. So imagine if I'm a hacker and I want to target somebody, the, the different ways that I could access the information is I could go to a data broker and pay them the 995 and get everything about them uh, that I possibly can from them. I can then go to their social media accounts, see what's linked to that mobile number and get mother's maiden name, other things like that. And through that process, the hacker may send you spam uh, emails and texts and include links to try and get you to click on that. And with that, they'll inject a couple lines of code to grab that you're a T-Mobile user, you've got an iPhone 10, and your device ID is this you know, long digit number. So then when I call the mobile operator, I've got your name, your address, your, de your device ID. I've got all this prepared. So when they say, oh, what's your PIN number? Oh, you know what? It was on the device that got stolen then they're going to say, okay, great. Then um, we can verify you another way. What's your mother's maiden name? What's your last address? What's I, I have all the information already. And so this is why there's, there's a Princeton study where they uh, did a study on SIM swapping and their success rate was 80%. So this is why that percent is so high. It's not saying that 80% of everybody's going to get SIM swap. It's just that if you're a target, you become an easy target. Like Let's say you went to your phone store and you drove up in a Lamborghini and the person asked you, hey, how'd you buy that Lamborghini? And you say, oh, wow, well, I did really well on Bitcoin. When you walk out, that store employee may have just made you a target through friends who are hackers. So they have information about you, those hackers, and then go to the data brokers and, and get your information various ways. And that's why the success rate is so high. In fact, uh, about two months ago, I had a sales rep do a demo on the sales lead tool. And I'm not going to name the company because there's a number of companies that have this type of capability. But he was he was telling me um, about how I can go on LinkedIn, use their tools, and it's going to help me get all the, the contact information for these targets. So I'm like, okay, great. Well, give me all of the uh, CIOs in the U.S. and that have crypto in their profile. And that, that became a list. So he said, okay, great. So this is just the LinkedIn uh, feature like anyone can use. And then he, he hits the button on his AI tool. It then went and used these web crawlers. And in 30 seconds, it gathered information on all these people for what are their personal business emails. And um, it could include family members that are, that are linked to their profiles. What are, are all their phone numbers? So um, when he, when I looked at my profile and what it found, it found actually like three old mobile numbers that I haven't used for over 10 years. And it also found a couple personal email IDs on me. And one of them kind of shocked me because it was one that I thought I kept secret and that I, I rarely used. I used it for a couple of crypto accounts. I could not wait to get off that call and went and created two, two new email accounts and then used one for each one of those crypto accounts. And I've never used those ever again because... Um, these web crawlers are going to link whatever you use those emails for to your name, to your mobile number. Now, if you want to find out what information has been linked to your mobile number, then you're in luck. Um, most people, you know, you could just go to your internet browser and search on your name and find information about you. You can find images and, and uh, information about, you know, social media profiles, LinkedIn profile, things like that. And that, that's easy to find. Now, if you were to do a Google search on your mobile number, the information you find is probably going to be really, really limited. And unless you wanted to pay for more information, um, then it's not readily available. Uh, so if you want to find out what info has been linked to your mobile number, then Afani has created such a tool and you can use it for free. And it, it does cost Afani money for every query that's run. So uh, the number of queries per day is limited. But if you uh, check this uh, app site, uh, this, excuse me, the website out early in the morning, then you're going to get a free query. Uh, the URL is app, app.afani.com forward slash phone. It's going to ask you to enter your mobile number. You submit. It's going to then ask you to verify the information. And so we have to do this for security purposes. The information that comes in the report is going to be redacted. And we have to do that, again, for security purposes. But also, uh, the if you have a mobile number that people have previously owned, that information is also going to be linked to that mobile number. So we have to keep that information secure, but you're going to see information about you, your family members, address, past jobs, all of that. You're going to see if your mobile number was part of a data breach and uh, it's going to be a useful report and it may shock you. Now, let's say you went and run that report. And if you're one of those people that's shocked, most people are, 
and you're going to see all this data. Now you're going to realize, okay, well, now I understand why I'm getting spammed, why I'm a target. And if I was a target, somebody picked me. And if somebody sim swapped me, you're going to look at all this proprietary information that they have a foundation for to then go and get into your bank, your brokerage, your email, your crypto, your social media. So uh, we get questions like, okay, I get it, but what do I do about it? And so the first thing is you want to get a secure mobile service. And so Fani sells a, a safe mobile plan that includes your choice of top operators in the US. So let's say AT&T, for example, you're gonna get your unlimited voice data tax in US, Canada, Mexico, and it comes with SIM swap security. And the way that they do that is that uh, your uh, carrier, whatever network you choose, all those employees are locked out their call centers, their stores, third-party stores, and that data is never sold. Your information is also removed from that carrier. And so even if somebody was a nefarious person inside of the carrier, inside of the store, wanted to look up information about a specific mobile number, they're just going to see a funny. They're not going to see your info. A funny becomes your 24 by 7 support. They provide the uh, customer support and use a, an 11 layer verification process that is technical and manual steps that the carriers cannot afford to do. They got too many pulls, too many gaps, too many people around the world that have access to your information. So we have to close that down and then we do our own verification to make sure that your mobile account can never get stolen away. And we back it up with a $5 million insurance policy. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can have this data deleted by a data deletion company. And so if you go to this tool and you use it and you submit it and you've got your report, through that process, you're going to see two logos that we've listed there that we've recommended. And that includes Optory and My Data Removal. And, the, and uh, the reason that I've included those two is because uh, we are a security company, we care about data, and we have to know who the other people are. So I, I've been on the phone with uh, their CEOs, for example, I've done video calls, uh, voice calls, and so I feel comfortable that they're going to protect me and thus protect anybody that I recommend. Um, also, Privacy B is another one. So um, I've done a video call with the Privacy B CEO and business development manager great people. So all three of those are great choices. And just be leery, there are data deletion companies out there that are um, headquartered like outside the US. So they're not bound by US regulations and data controls and, and having third parties, you know, verify that they're keeping your information secure. And so you want to have that. So anytime I go to a website and I don't see a team listed there, or I go check out a data deletion company on LinkedIn and they don't have a presence or maybe they have a page, but there's no employees listed. Well, I'm not going to use them. It doesn't say, uh, doesn't mean that they're not a great company. Um, it just means that I'm not going to use them. And so therefore I can't recommend them. But um, with Optory and my data removal, I feel very comfortable. So what you can do is go to those companies and you can pay for like a one-time deletion or you can pay for an annual license. Now, the problem with doing a one-time deletion is that, um, you know, it's going to take about 30 days for them to delete, let's say, 80, 90 percent of the information. And if you were to just do it for one month, then web crawlers are active. And literally, like in 90 days later, that information is going to be loaded up on the data broker. So this is kind of a tough situation here. So I recommend that you get the annual license so that they are constantly monitoring for a year. And so when that web callers go out and stick your data back with those data brokers, it's going to go back and keep deleting that information to help protect you. So between a secure mobile service from Afani and the uh, data deletion services, that's going to cut down on spam. It's going to cut down on advertisers coming after you. And it is going to uh, eliminate a lot of the potential hacking that could make you a target by not having your information readily available. Now, there, there is no like 100% way to like be sure. Um, the only thing you can do is just make yourself very dif difficult to hack and get information out of. So they go to the next thousand people that are on their list and skip over you. That's about all you can do. Now put the links to Optory and uh, my data removal in the description below. And uh, you can also uh, just click on the logos that are on the app dot com forward slash phone URL, the, the actual tool. You can just click on those. Uh, we do have a discount code for Optory. That's a 20% off discount code. 
So you want to take advantage of that. Um, I think after the discount code, you're going to want to check, you know, pricing on both of them. Uh, these companies, all of all of the data uh, deletion companies tend to have a very flexible price. So just do a comparison of the two. Um, but definitely if you switch, uh, if you're going to use Optory, then use that 20% uh, off code. And uh, and that code's also listed on the Afani webpage as well. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and you find it valuable and you now understand why your mobile number is more important than your social security number. Your business, family, personal information is linked to that mobile number. Now, um, one last comment, because some people may think like, oh, okay, well, I'll just go out and get a new mobile number. Well, you want to be careful, and we always recommend, because people will call up Afani and say, should I get a new number or should I pour over my uh, number that I've been using for the last 10 years? We always tell them, just stay with the one you've been using for the last 10 years. So it's good for you personally, good for your business. We're going to protect you. You're not going to get SIM swapped. And then if you wanted to take that extra step and use one of these data deletion services, but one of the things that hackers will do is they will spam you, spam you, you get a brand new phone number. Now, when they try and text you and get a rejection, now they know information about you, the collected information, and they know that you've given up that phone number. So now they know that they can probably impersonate you, use that mobile number. They may call your bank by spoofing that mobile number. Um, or they may go and try and grab, you know, bribe somebody to grab that mobile number really quickly. And it's still associated with you all over the internet and all your accounts. And so they can then use that to then hack you when you give up that old mobile number. So, um, you know, port over your existing number and just protect it. Make sure it's secure. Have the insurance peace of mind. And then uh, use your phone properly and just stay away from spam emails and spam text, don't click on them. They, they try and make you angry sometimes just so you'll click on it, return, say, hey, you know, quit texting me, but that's what they want. So um, I've done videos on this, like on IP, IP logger video about how they use um, text and images to hide this tracking information, uh, tracking links to, to try and hack you. So just be aware that people are constantly daily trying to get you to click on things, start a conversation. It could be like a random WhatsApp uh, message sent to you from what appears to be a really beautiful Chinese girl from Hong Kong that happens to want to marry an American. And you're going to find out that if you carry down that conversation, you're probably going to come to the conclusion that it's probably a guy. He's probably in the U.S. or some other country. And all they're trying to do is um, get as much information about you as possible. So stay safe, stay secure, get a secure mobile service. Uh, be wary of all this data about you on the internet and enjoy your day. Oh, and one more thing. Remember to subscribe and remember to like. Thank you.